Hello, Patriots. What we're going to talk about today is I'm going to introduce you to what we call two-column proofs. A proof is nothing more than saying something and then saying why we said it. So, two-column proof. A proof will give us limited information and require us to draw conclusions to reach our goal. So I'm going to tell you something, and you're going to tell, you're going to expand on that until you reach the outcome I'm going to ask you to reach. Every two-column proof has two columns. That's why it's called a two-column proof. There'll be a list of statements, and then you're just, it's going to be the conclusions that you're making. You're going to say something and say something and say something, and then right next to it is going to be a reason, and you're going to say why you made those statements. Um, the first step whenever we make a proof is always whatever information I give you. Whatever information I give you is always called given and it always comes first. Let's see how this looks. So right here is what we're given. We're given this equation and I want to prove that X equals 78. So we're going to start with what it's giving us. We're going to start with the equation because the reason of it is given. The statement the conclusion I'm going to make, the, the conclusion I'm going to draw, is that this equation is true. How do I know this equation is true? Because I was told it was true. Now, let's go about solving this equation. Because what I want to try to get to is to find out what x equals. To find out what x equals, I have to solve it. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to distribute the 4x into the parentheses. So I did 4 times x plus 7, I got 4x plus 28. What allows me to do that? The distributive property. because uh, I ask myself, what do I do? I did this. Why do I do it? Because it was the distributive property. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 4x from both sides. I'm going to move the smaller x from the left side over to the right side, and that is the subtraction property of equality. I can subtract anything I want from both sides of the equation. You don't necessarily need to know these names, but that's the reason why this works. x still isn't by itself, so I'm going to add 50 to both sides, and I get 78 equals X. What did I do? I added to both sides. Lastly, I'm going to ask Artie, did I get what I wanted? Well, I wanted to say X equals 78. I'm saying 78 equals X. So I'm going to flip that around. And that's a rule called the symmetric property of equality. These rules aren't so important, but this is what's important is this is what a two column proof looks like. You're going to say something and you're going to tell me why you said it. Let's take that and put it with geometry. So we're going to have a proof about parallel lines. I'm giving you in uh, parallel lines, and I'm giving you this picture. The pictures are always accurate. The given information is always true. And this is what we're trying to get to. So immediately what you can we know is when we're trying to prove two lines are parallel, I know two angles in this. Every pair of angles is either going to be congruent or it's going to be supplementary. Any two angles put together, any two angles I make a pair out of, will be congruent or supplementary. Well, the pair we're interested in is angle two and angle six. All right, so that's what we're trying to do. So let's look at what we're given. We're given line M is parallel to line J. That's given information. Given information always goes first. Because we've got these parallel lines, let's go ahead and highlight the transversal and shade on the inside. The angles we're looking at are angles 2 and 6. I notice that angle 2 and 6 are alternate interior angles. Well, if we have parallel lines, we know alternate interior angles are always congruent. So angle 2 is congruent to angle 6 because of the alternate interior angle theorem. The alternate interior angle theorem is what we already know. You may, you may or may not have been discussed by name in your class, but alternate interior angles are congruent if two lines are parallel. If the two lines cut by a transversal are parallel, then alternate interior angles are congruent. And if you notice right here, we have angle two is congruent to angle six. That is what I wanted to prove. So this proof is done. We have completed this proof. Let's try another proof. Once again, I am giving the same exact picture. I am telling you line M is parallel to line J, and I want to prove that the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. So we 
are given this. M is parallel to J. We always write the given information down first, and I am going to mark that up on my diagram. Now that I know I have parallel lines, let's highlight my transversal, shade my inside, and we're going to focus on the two angles they gave us. Well, 2 and 5 are consecutive interior angles, or same side interior angles, however you want to say it. If I have parallel lines, angle 2 and angle 5 are supplementary. That's the consecutive interior angle theorem. Angle 2 and angle 5 are supplementary, the consecutive interior angle theorem, because the theorem states if two, pair, if two lines cut by a transversal are parallel, then consecutive interior angles are supplementary. Well, how does that help me get to this? Well, the very definition of supplementary says that two angles added together equals 180. So the measure of angle 2 plus the measure of angle 5 equals 180. That's the very definition of supplementary. I've established my angles are supplementary right here, so I can use the word anytime I want after that. We have reached what I am trying to prove. We're done. Well, what if I'm trying to prove lines are parallel? going to be the very similar process. So I'm going to start by writing down my given information. We are told the measure of angle 1 is 70 and the measure of angle 8 is 70. And I know that to be true because it's given. Well, I've got my transversal, my interior, and these two angles here, angle 1 and angle 8. I'm going to ask myself, what type of angles are those? Those are alternate exterior angles. Well, remember, we're going to want these to somehow be congruent. Alternate exterior angles need to be congruent to have parallel lines. Well, what do they tell us? Uh, well, they told us they were the same. They didn't tell us they were congruent. They said they were the same. Because they're the same measure, I can say they're congruent. They're the same measure, so I can say they're congruent. That's the definition of congruent. The definition of congruent says if they are the same measure, they are congruent. That means my two lines are parallel because that's the alternate exterior angle converse, not the theorem, the converse. If you are trying to prove parallel lines, always use the converse. Don't use the theorem because the converse says if alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the two lines cut by the transversal are parallel. I once again got to what I was trying to prove, so I'm done. As a reminder, very important, if I give you parallel lines, you are going to end, you're going to use a theorem to prove congruent angles or supplementary angles. If I give you parallel lines, theorems prove congruent and supplementary angles. If I give you uh, angles, you're going to use a converse to prove parallel lines. If I give you angles, use the converse to prove parallel lines. So if you still have questions about this video, Patriots, please jot those questions down here and get with your teacher beforehand. I am also in room R16. I will be available before school or after school. So come see me if your teacher is not available and I am. Have a wonderful day, Patriots, and we will see you when we see you.